What's up friends, I'm Rob Chapman and for the past 15 years, four hairstyles and three different weight categories, I have been demonstrating guitar products for you, the wonderful people of the internet, at places like Anderton's, Toman, Guitar Center, all over the planet. I've loved it, it's been incredible. I want to deliver to you the top five amplifiers of the past 15 years. If I tell you this has taken me some time to decide on the five, I'm not kidding you, man. This has been absolutely incredibly hard, but I got there. I have the top five and I have the one worst amplifier of the past 15 years as voted by you in no particular order. Amplifier number one is the Marshall Ingve Malmsteen head. <laughs> now you might be thinking it's a bit of an outlier that's an odd one it's a signature product does it fit to lots of different uses when i tell you this amp is probably the most accurate to a signature tone I've ever played in my life. I'm not kidding. You plug into it with a strap, you sound like Ingve. It's amazing. And what they managed to pack into this enormous head is staggering. So this is this is Ingve's signature kind of drive tone in a pedal, but built into the amp. Hmm. Um, and it's also on the foot switch as well. The clean headroom is there, the gain is there, the tone is there. Ingve Malmsteen has a very particular way of playing. He has a very particular setup on his guitar that frets, are scalloped, he scalloped, I don't know, someone's gonna correct me and that's fine. Uh, he uses eight gauge strings. Uh, it, it's really unusual, but irrespective of all of that, the amplifier that he managed to design with Marshall is honestly staggering. I really wish I had one. I wish I'd bought one when I demonstrated it with Leah Anderton's and lol at my hair. What you can't see on the inside is how excited I am to be playing the Marshall Ingve Malmsteen. Amp number two. This might not come as a surprise to some of you guys who have followed me for the past 15 years, but it might surprise some of you because you may have never heard of this amplifier, which is from Fender, and it is the Machete, or Machete, the Machete, staggering. Hey, greetings, I'm Chappers. And I'm the captain. We were very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, this this, this is actually, I would definitely, definitely consider this. It's a typical American sounding, um, you know, quality amplifier. <laughs> Sign of a, a well-voiced amplifier was when actually my favorite tone is pretty much everything. In the middle. In the middle. <laughs> I don't know why this amplifier isn't huge. I mean, it should be beyond collectible. You think of Fender, you think of bright, crisp, clean tones, natural sounds, old school, Telecasters, finger pick stuff. The machete says, nah. That's good. That's, That's good. really f It had one of the most pleasant, warm sounding, fat, punch you in the guts distortions that, that Lee and I had heard in years. And really it took us by surprise. It really did. You plugged in, you're expecting one thing, you get something completely different and it's served to you on a platter of lava. Amplifier number three. I love this amplifier. Again, I really wish I had, I wish I had all of these amplifiers in my arsenal, but I do not, which is a shame. At the time of demonstrating this amplifier, uh, the day before, my dog had very sadly passed away, Cassie, and I miss her deeply. 
And during the demonstration of this amplifier, I got all of my feels out into the solo I was playing and it cuts at the end because I had a little bit of a little bit of a cry and that's good. It's healthy to do that and people should cry and they should talk about their problems with their brothers. Let's make sure we all do that. It's the Two Rock Sensor. <laughs> Everybody in the room today has complimented Rob on his tone, saying we think it's probably the best amp sound he's had in here with some of the best playing. I thought he sounded a bit Gary Moore-esque at you. one point. It's a phenomenal amplifier. The tonal structure is so thick and meaty. Harmonics just seem to fly everywhere. And I just couldn't get over how good this sounded. Two rock sensor. Number four. <laughs> now, Again, you might not have expected this one to crop up in a top five amplifiers, but I'm telling you, this is a really, really good amplifier. If you own one, congratulations on owning one of the top five amps I've demonstrated in the past 15 years, for sure. And it's by line six, which again is going to surprise an absolute ton of you. Many years down the line later, I ended up working with and getting to know one of the guys that worked on the design of this amplifier. Now I know why it's so good, and it's the DT50. Uh, the brand new uh, Line 6 DT50 amplifier. It's the, and the surprise is, it's really good. Yeah, it's the only one in, in uh, England at the moment, uh, and we've managed to nab it to do a video. Probably the simplest and yet most sophisticated tube amplifier that they've ever made. So the first thing I've got to tell you about this, there's no modeling or, or uh, sort of DSP or anything in this amplifier. The 50 watt combo with all sorts of stuff built into it and it was a real hybrid marriage of new tech and old tech. <laughs> just sounds amazing. The high going structure, the clean structure, the crunch, the functionality built into it. It was a pinnacle of what could be achieved at the time and I was just blown away by it. DT50. Okay, the last amplifier, and this won't be a surprise to anybody, um, is the Boss Katana. specifically the Mark II Tuba 12 combo. Listen, man, <laughs> it's just a great amplifier. Doesn't matter if you're a tube snob, you know, if you're into the boutique valve thing, it doesn't really matter. It looks at you and it laughs. They are incredible. I have personally set them on fire, fired arrows into them, kicked them down the stairs. I have toured America with them. I have done pretty much almost everything imaginable with a Boss Katana and the 2 by 12 combo is phenomenal. Again, if you won't want congratulations, if you don't, probably consider it because they're really, really good. And even if you don't want to use the preamp built inside, 
it's a phenomenal thing to plug things into the effects return, create your own preamp with pedals or whatever. It's just a great amplifier. The Boss Katana. Okay, two honourable mentions. Fantastic amplifiers that for whatever reason were competing with others and I couldn't put them in this list. So the first one is very expensive and the second one is incredibly affordable. The first one is the Matchless Independence. It's 35 watts, it weighs more than a car, that's the only problem. Get around that, you've got potentially the best rock amp ever. Probably one of the nicest tones I've ever played. Um, the guys at Matchless are really lovely. The amps they make are second to none. And the Independence is the flagship head. Uh, it's just staggering. I mean, it really is. Go check out the Matchless Independence. And the other amplifier, as an honorable mention, is the Blackstar HT5, the original. I used that head uh, along with some other amplifiers on the early Dorje recordings on a whole bunch of other things. It's an amazing recording amp. I had a friend called Jaden Rose who used to gig with it. <laughs> so go check out the HD5 if you haven't already, and I'd be surprised if you haven't. Amplifiers I wanted to include, but was prohibited from doing so because I was endorsed by them or had signature product with them or relationships and, and politics that would mean I felt bad including it in a top five list because people would say, hey, you're a dirty, fat, hairy, old cheater, of which I am not all of those things. <laughs> From Orange Amplifiers. It's probably my favorite amp of the show, if I'm honest, is this tiny Terracomo. It's unreal, it really is. It's got a very different quality to the, uh, the head. <laughs> The Tiny Terror. That amp is just a phenomenon. I wish it had had an effects lead, but really, if you want simplicity in a box, it's just incredible what you can do with the Tiny Terror. Um, low, low recordings, or you can gig with them. I gigged loads with the Tiny Terror. Incredible amplifier. Bad Cat, in particular for me, the Hot Cat. <laughs> Bad Cat make incredible amplifiers. The guys at Bad Cat are lovely. They make boutique, creamy, beautiful things and some more affordable things now. And the Hot Cat is one of the best rock and metal amps I have ever played in my life. And lastly, but by no means leastly, the Victory Silverback. <laughs> my original signature with Victory back in the day when the only two artists were me and Guthrie and the brand launched. It was originally going to be called Olympic Amplifiers, I think. And that, that's why they got that little crest and then decided last minute to call it Victory. And we la we la they launched, I have no affiliation to Victory Amps, they launched with the Silverback and an amp that Guthrie was working on, which became the V30. Victory make amazing amps. You know, the RD1, I love it, the BD1, uh, the Kraken. It's just an amazing company um, run by some really good friends of mine, including Lee Anderton. Hey, buddy. And um, yeah, British amps, amazing stuff. I love it. So you're probably holding on wondering what's the worst amp that I have demonstrated in the past 15 years as voted by you. There are two of them. <laughs> 
and I'm going to do my best to try and defend them. So the first one, and it's probably not a surprise, is the Line 6 Spider. And I think, look, hey, we're just going to say it because we're English and we're allowed to. I'm not entirely sure that the kind of the, the demo that Line 6 America did where they had the kind of insane gain sounds, I kind of thinking, I'm not sure that did anything other than kind of reinforce what it was that people thought that the previous one Nailed on, my friend. Great. I mean, it's a box with a billion tricks inside, and I suppose when there are so many things inside a very affordable product, it's easy to get option paralysis, and then you don't really fine tune and get a good tone, or timbre, um, from a product like that. I will admit, I don't like that amplifier, but Line 6 makes some incredible products. They make some really, really good things, and man, the spider, it became kind of a meme, something that it was like fun to hate. So, you know, ease up on the Spider-Man. <laughs> and the second, uh, which I had completely forgotten about, is the PV Piranha, the little mini head, the original iteration. <laughs> PV 6505 Piranha. And we're never going to say it sounds like a 6505. I mean, it doesn't reach the echelons. Well, of it is a 6505, so it I is. Guess it but it, it, if you like, if, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten that I'd even demonstrated that amplifier, but a number of you mentioned the Piranha as being something that sounded boxy, like cardboard, an abomination. What was the other thing they said? Um, should never have, something should never have existed. A PV again makes some beautiful products. In fact, the first amplifier that I ever purchased and loved to pieces, I bought it in Toronto at Long and McQuaid, a store that I absolutely love, um, and it was the PV Delta Blues, phenomenal amp. PV makes some great products. I guess the Piranha wasn't one of them. Anyway, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, please subscribe, press the bell, do all the good things for the holy algorithm, because coming up next will be top five guitars of the past 15 years. Take it easy. Chappers out.